and yeah, let's let's talk about images solicitations here. We've got uh, a bunch of image comics, starting with Reckless. Uh, this is for December, by the way. Comics coming out then. We've got image with a much fuller plate. Uh, but I want to set the stage with this, and this is the thing to be thinking of in the back of your mind, is um, what's going to be the big driver for image that really starts to move into that same uh, category and space that uh, things like Walking Dead, Invincible, uh, both of which are gone, uh, Saga, which is on infinite hiatus, Wicked the Divine is gone. What is going to be at that next level for image, and, and what can we do? Uh, this is Reckless. It's a, it's a graphic novel. It's uh, Ed Brubaker, Sean Phillips. It's 144 pages, uh, hardcover. It's sex, drugs, and murder in 80s Los Angeles, or just Los Angeles. Anyway, um, this is a, a one-and-done kind of story, although there is a sequel coming next year. But um, yeah, there's some nice stuff. You got, you got, the, you got your standard um, guy with an axe here. He's got a, some conflict. We've got your kind of scummy-looking guy here. We have, you know, the straight-laced woman. We got a car blowing up, and we got our you know, streetwise, she's, she knows what's going on. That's, we got the cast for Reckless. Um, I've heard, uh, you know, a good book. Uh, so anyway, Post Americana, issue one of six. This is uh, Steve Skoroshi, Dave Stewart. And this comic is billed as, uh, you know, from the uh, Maestro's creator, we stand on guard co-creator and the Matrix story borrower, Steve Skoros. Um, the Cheyenne Mountain installation, AKA the bubble, this most sophisticated super bunker in the world is built to ensure the survival of America's executive branch government. Should the unthinkable happen, the world ended. And uh, the executive branch didn't reach the sanctuary, uh, but, you know, some rich people did. And so now uh, there's a new president of the United States um, and subjugate the survivors using the bunker resources meant to rebuild it. But there's a wasteland girl. She's deadly and she's hellbent on revenge. So post Americana. There you go. Um, Homesick Pilots. This is Dan Waters um, and Casper Vingard. Uh, I'm going to butcher a lot of names during this. Uh, the team behind Limbo. It's a brand new ongoing series. In the summer of 84, a haunted house walks across California. Inside is Amy, lead singer of a high school punk band who's been missing for weeks. How did she get there? What do the ghosts want? It's uh, songs, it's punk, and it's bloody action. Power Rangers meets The Shining. Homesick Pilots. Gideon Falls. This is a you know ongoing uh, Adriana Sorrento, Jeff Lemire uh, book. This is uh, you know the uh, you know an oversized this is a giant story where the universe of Gideon's Falls finally converge. Can the combined forces of this ragtag bag of adventures be enough to stop the Laughing Man and his limitless legions of evil? This is the finale. This is the final issue of this. Uh, we've made it to 27 issues, 80 pages, eight bucks, Gideon Falls. I know that a lot of people like this book. So, uh, you know, are you sad that this is going away? Uh, that's, that's too bad. Postal, uh, the night shift. This is Levi Flinning and Stephanie Phillips uh, with Cecilia Laval, Lovalvo, Jesse Elliott. Um, Return to Eden, Wyoming in two thrilling tales from the talent hunt winters of Postal. Uh, for Postal, I should say. Can Sheriff Roy Magnum really maintain order in a town full of criminals? And then, um, you know, some, some stuff with Molly who kill, kills people. Um, here's Bliss, Volume 1. Uh, Sean Lewis, Colin Yarsky. This is a drug called Bliss, taking over a feral city, erasing memories who are too upset to, to face. Where do the memories go? And, um, you know, somebody drinks some memories and then all hell breaks loose. This is Stealth Trade Paperback. Uh, Stealth is uh, Mike Costa, Nate Belligard. This is the story of uh, the guy who is, um, uh, he's he, the, 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 basically the, the person inside the suit of Stealth has Alzheimer's. And, um, you know, so he's he's fighting crime, but he's also, uh, you know, um, he, he's, he's got Alzheimer's. And that's, that's a problem. And here's a trade paperback to Skyward. I personally like this story a lot. This is Joe Henderson. Uh, Lee Garbett. I, I really thought this was a good book uh, when it was out last year. Um, here's that Texas Blood trade paperback. Um, we're going to go a little bit faster to trade paperbacks. Here's Jeff Lemire's The Cinder. This is a fine, fine book if you're into that. Here's Coffin Bound trade paperback. Uh, here's the Die trade paperback. This book, uh, Die, is not getting the same hype from Kieran Gillian that his normal. This was not Wicked in the Divine in terms of sales, uh, but it was it was critically acclaimed. Isn't it? And here's Die, Die, Die. So you can get one die or three dies. Um, and this is a Robert Kirkman, Chris Burnham. This was the book that uh, they stealth launched. 
it's super bloody and violent and crazy. Um, but it hasn't, it hasn't taken off. Like I think a lot of people, it, it kind of, it was stealth launched and it, it, it stealth launched. Uh, people didn't see it. Um, and then here's the outcast trade paperback, uh, pretty violent, you know, pretty violent, uh, is there here's Savage Dragon archives. This is volume 10. Um, uh, and here's family matters. This has only om om just minimal, uh, uh, kitty, uh, nudity in it. Um, I'm just kidding. There's no kitty nudity. There's just kids watching nudity is what's going on in this book. Uh, anyway, it's, it's, it's all for gags. Um, here's big girls. Number five, this is uh, writer artist, uh, Jason Howard. And, um, and it means war. We've got some aliens. We've got some people shooting things and, and Ember has to decide which side to fight for. And this is a book that's getting more and more hype. Uh, big girls is it, it did well. Here's Bob queen trump card, uh, four issues. Here it is. Um, make America gape again. Uh, the votes are in. The devious bomb queen lights the fuse to her explosive plot. Now a table of turn. Trump races for survival in a dramatic ending that will change the landscape forever. Um, this is a mini series, and um, it's got it's it, it, there's some different things going on. People have called it very political, but this this has been done before, um, and it's got boobs. So here's Commander in Crisis. This is Steve Orlando's book. This is getting a ton of hype as well um but it, it remains to be seen if it's how well it's gonna hold uh, kind of like undiscovered country some of the image books right now are coming in with a ton of hype but we don't know yet you know how they're actually going to perform undiscovered country started out strong and then sank it didn't didn't measure out at that um saga kind of level uh, not everything should that's that's a quite high bar but uh, a lot of these new books come out i, I suspect are going to hit the same kind of pace we're going to see a big first issue and then we're going to see um, a fairly rapid decline. It feels like a lot of the the Marvel and DC behavior of how new books launch and then perform has now come to image in the indies, which makes sense. It's in many cases the same creators. But anyway, in uh, Crisis, uh, in uh, Commanders in Crisis, the Crisis Command interrogates a ticking clock corpse. But how can heroes save a world without empathy? First, they have to figure out how to save it within themselves. Um, here's crossover number two. This is the other book that's getting a ton of hype right now. Donny Cates, Jeff Shaw. Uh, this is, uh, basically that, uh, you know, stuff comes out of the comic book and everything crosses over and super prisons, magic guns, government agents, other stuff, uh, lots of crazy stuff. I, uh, this is an ongoing series. I think, um, I'm not entirely sure. I thought it was ongoing and then I heard it was, no, it was, it was a limited series, but you don't know that from here. It'd be really nice if in this area they would just say like ongoing or limited series or they would just like make it clear consistently. That would be cool. Anyway, here's Decorum. This is uh, Decorum number eight by Jonathan Hickman. Um, I'm going to do a review of this book. This book is kind of a tough nut to, to get into. I mean, but this is the series finale as well. Uh, this is eight, eight issues. Um, there are many assassins in the universe story, the most well-mannered one. Decorum, eight issues. I, I don't know if this was announced as a limited series, but... Anyway, uh, it's again, it's a book that had some hype coming in and then immediately vanished. Uh, it's like uh, comics are becoming junk food where, you know, they, do, they don't stick around. Uh, Department of Truth, James Tinian. This is his book. Um, and this is, you know, how can a journalist ethically report on a story they know can't possibly be true as packages with proof of impossible stories keep arriving on one reporter's doorstep sent by a mysterious entity known only as Q. One reporter must find the answer to themselves. Um, this book is getting, again, some really nice hype. Um, once again, not sure if this is going to stick around or if it's a limited series that isn't calling itself a limited series, but anyway, Department of Truth is, um, is there. Excellence number 12, Brandon Thomas, um, the world has been built in the overseas lies. Now it will burn. This is issue number 12. This is a pretty solid book. Again, flying under the, the radar for a lot of people. Uh, Family Tree by Jeff Lemire, uh, Phil Hester, um, this is, uh, this is, uh, basically it's, it's a, it's a family story. Well, that's not quite right. Um, it's, I, I'm not sure how to describe this, this book actually. Um, uh, it's, it, you know, there's, there's basically, um, Hey, you know, it's, it's a good book. Actually, Jeff Lemire is writing a good book there. I, I I'll think better about how to do that. I'm doing a terrible job of explaining some of this. Here's firepower by Robert Kirkman that I think, again, a lot of people don't realize exists, but Chris Samney, uh, is on it. It's quite a, a solid little book. This is the end of the first arc. Uh, Owen is reunited with his sister. Reunion does not go the way you think it will. Firepower is, uh, mark my words, in 2021, I think Firepower is going to be a, uh, assuming it doesn't get canceled, 
or they stop working on it, I think Firepower is, is one of those books you'll want to check out for sure. I think Kirkman's doing a really nice story there. Here's Getting It Together, number three of four. This is Scenic Race's comic, uh, comic. Um, and this is um, uh, Slice of Life. Let's call it Slice of Life. Let's do that. Um, what could go wrong? It's an, it's an oversized issue. Um, uh, there's a breakup and there's a gig and there's some music and, um, you know, it's, it's, it's slice of life with punk rock and music. I uh, mean, I'm, uh, these creators, anybody listening to this is just going to cringe. Um, here is head lopper number 14. This is, uh, Andrew McLean. A lot of covers by Trad Moore, by the way, uh, out of image. Uh, this, in fact, we see, do we have the other cover here? Let's see. We do. Uh, we got a lot of Tradmore covers from Image. I, uh, there's there's many of them. Um, anyway, this is a fantasy book. Um, good stuff. Again, if you if you like this, here's Ice Cream Man number twenty two, the book that that can. Um, this book is kind of horror anthology. Uh, lots of little stories. Um, some some of these stories land really well for me. I think they're really well done. And then others are just kind of they seem like shock value kind of nonsense. But it's a it's a solid book. You know to check out Ice Cream Man number two. Not a Tradmore cover uh, variant, but there you go. Um, Inkblot number four. Uh, this is kind of a historical again fantasy book. Um, they they you know it's it's it again. There's a lot of the the whole uh, D and D kind of uh, phenomenon is really coming in where people are wanting to explore that that universe, and this feels like a lot of that kind of fantasy stuff. Um, Kick ass versus hit girl. The crossover. Steve Niles uh, doing this, so it, we do not have a. Um, Mark Millar involved in this, but this is, you know, uh, Kick-Ass. The new Kick-Ass is going up against Hit Girl, and um, you know what what will happen between kind of uh, the new the new Hit Girl and uh, and, sorry the new Kick-Ass and the old Hit Girl. There you go. Um, Hit that was a property that was really really popular for a while, and then just uh, it was it was almost like they did too much or the quality slipped or something something. But but Kick-Ass is just has nowhere anywhere close to the the brand franchise uh, success that it, that it used to. Um, Philadelphia, this is a very solid book right here. Ronnie Barnes, uh, Jason Sean Alexander. Um, this is a, a horror book, and it's, it's really, really quite solid. Lots of good surprises in Philadelphia, and this is um, uh, definitely good horror, uh, absolutely. Uh, Lost Soldiers, number five of five. This is Alice Cott. Um, this is a, I don't want to say it's a war story, but it's, it's Alice Cott, so... I have a feeling this is a book he'd like to be doing over um, with the Punisher, but they would never let him do um, to the Punisher what's going on here. Here's The Marked, um, and it's a story about Tats. No, no, it's a, st well, yes, actually it is. Um, this is uh, using Marked Magic or uh, kind of the Omega Tattoo, Tattoo's ta uh, 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 markings that can summon magic and, and do other things. Um, yeah, we get, I need to get some of these creators on to just explain their pitch uh, better. Here's Monstrous, uh, Marjorie Liu. Uh, this is a, a, a fine little book here, I think. Uh, Bridging the Gap Between the Fifth and the Sixth Arc. This is a two-issue little series that uh, basically kind of fills in some of the universe um, and, and the characters within. Nailbiter Returns. Uh, Joshua Williamson, um, of course, who's moved on to, to very big things, um, is... Uh, you know, this is a this is a solid little book. If you like the first nail biter, it's well, it's nail biter returns, so it's it's more um, goes into the past, goes into kind of this this interesting standpoint of a kind of a thriller comic with some with romance and some. I need to work on the genres here. Oblivion song, uh, number thirty. This comic keeps going. I keep believing that this comic is is headed to an end, but um, it's the end of this arc. But the comic is still ongoing. Uh, Nathan Gold, Fate of the Earth, Hanging from the Balance. And uh, you get the feeling that there's, the, the, you know, if you've been reading along this story, it's heading to a, a, a bad place. That's, that's where it feels like it's going. Uh, Rat Queens, number 24, by Ryan Ferrier and uh, Maury Tot, Casey Silver. Uh, Rat Queens is a book that had so much kind of hype and attention. And then a lot of drama went on with the creative team. And it, it, uh, it kind of, it got eclipsed by other comics, I think, that were able to kind of pull this stuff off. Savage Dragon, 255, The Empty Grave. Fall Dragon tries to visit Dimension X to visit the grave of his departed wife, but maybe it's empty. I don't know. Um, and I, undoubtedly, we're going to get, uh, you know, the uh, the younger Savage Dragon and, uh, and his wife uh, with some sexual antics 
uh, I always sound like a prude when I say stuff like this. Sea of Stars, a Jason Aaron, Dennis Hallam. This is a kind of sci-fi type uh, story. Um, pretty, so this is pretty solid as well. I think Jason Aaron is putting his his better work here, honestly, than Avengers. I think Sea of Stars is a is a much more tight, much more um, inventive book than what's going on in the Avengers right now. But uh, there you go. Scumbag number three. This is Rick Remender. Uh, and Eric Powell, and this is basically, uh, you know, there's there's a mission, and and this guy sucks. He's not very good. So it's, uh, you know, he's he's he has to save the world, but he sucks. Uh, Seven to Eternity, which we haven't seen in a long time, it feels like. Uh, this issue number 15, again, Rick Remender, Jerome Opina. Uh, this book, I think, is winding up. It's It's coming to a conclusion. It's a solid little book, uh, but it it suffered from a lot of delays. I mean, it feels like this book has been going on for, God, I mean, like 10 years. It hasn't been, but it has that feeling of something that's just been delayed and delayed and delayed. But it's a, it's a solid, good story. This book will do well in trade. It's hard to believe it's only issue 15. Um, Spawn, 313, the book that's getting, getting a lot more sales than it used to. Um, Todd McFarlane is a writer, uh, Carlo Berberi, uh, Berberi. Barry, there you go. Um, it is Spawn versus Omega Spawn to the death. And uh, the fabric, you, you know, if you can't win and the hell and earth and bad problems and dogs and cats living together, all kinds of problems. Chip Zdarsky, Stillwater, uh, Ramon Perez. Uh, this is uh, kind of Chip Zdarsky doing a kind of a law story. Uh, well, not law, but it's a, um, uh, it's, it's a drama thriller. I guess would be the way to put that. There you go. Uh, Tartarus, number eight, Johnny Christius, uh, Andrew uh, Klonke. This is, uh, again, sci-fi, a little bit of kind of fantasy sci-fi, I would say here. Uh, some bit, there's some, there's, I've, I've heard some decent things about this lately as well. Undiscovered number, uh, Undiscovered Country, number 11, Scott Snyder, Chris, Charles Chalet, uh, Giuseppe Camoli, uh, Cam, Camoli, Camon, so, Camon Coley, ah, um, it is, uh, you know, the, the story of this group, uh, the America sealed itself off and then we're going in to investigate and get to the heart into the second zone of America in this issue, but find out what is going on with America, what has changed, what is going on, how does society come to be? And, um, you know, with this, the exploration of an America that went dark, uh, walking dead deluxe. Uh, this is, uh, just, just reprints, um, and more reprints. And, uh, yeah, some nice stuff. David Finch doing some covers and that is what you've got for image. So there you go. Um, what's exciting to you? Any of these crossover? That's probably the book that's getting the most hype out of us, but there's a lot of things. One thing to kind of say about image uh, over in general is that they do have a very wide breadth of different types of content. We like kind of some superhero stories, some boobs, some uh, horror, some uh, you know action sci-fi. They probably have maybe a little bit too much in the realm of um, sci-fi fantasy uh, and to know really what to do with it. Um, a lot of good stories there are getting kind of lost in, in the shuffle because they've just got so much, but some good stuff. I, I think um, you can generally say you can find some comic you're gonna like out of Image, um, one, one way or another. Not all of them, but chances are there will be a comic that you'll enjoy that image is producing. So hopefully this helped. Um, a little bit harder to do solicitations out of image than Marvel and DC, but uh, let me know if you enjoyed this and I'll do more of them. Otherwise, hey, like, subscribe, click the bell for notifications. Tell me what books you're into, you're interested in, and I'll make sure and cover those and talk more about them in the future. I'll learn how to pronounce people's names. And if you'd like me to do any deep dives into these books, you'd really like to, uh, to learn more, uh, let me know, give me a shout. Most importantly though, thanks for listening and watching. Thank <laughs> you.